Today's Mass Readings September 30, 2020 Memorial of St. Jerome, Priest and Doctor of the Church Wednesday of the 26th week in Ordinary Time St. Jerome One of the greatest biblical scholars of Christendom St. Jerome was born of Christian parents at Stratton, in Dalmatia around the year 345. Educated at the local school, he then studied rhetoric in Rome for eight years, before returning to Aquilia to set up a community of ascetics. When that community broke up after three years Jerome went to the east. He met an old hermit named Malchus, who inspired the saint to live in a bare cell, dressed in sackcloth studying the scriptures. He learned Hebrew from a rabbi. Then he returned to Antioch and was reluctantly ordained priest. With his bishop he visited Constantinople and became friendly with Saints Gregory Nazianzen and Gregory of Nyssa. And then in year 382 he went again to Rome to become the personal secretary of Pope Damasus. Here he met his dearest friends, a wealthy woman called Paula. Her daughter used to come and another wealthy woman named Marcella. Here too he began his finest work. Commissioned by the Pope, he began to revise the Latin version of the Psalms and the New Testament. With immense care and scholarship, Jerome eventually translated the whole of the Bible into the Latin version which is known as the Vulgate. But when Damasus died, his enemies forced the saint to leave Rome. Accompanied by Paul and Eustachium, Jerome went to Bethlehem. There he lived for 34 years till his death in year 420, building a monastery over which he presided and a convent, headed first by Paul and after her death by Eustachium. The saint set up a hospice for the countless pilgrims to that place. His scholarship, his polemics, his treatises and letters often provoked anger, and always stimulated those who read them. Plato located the soul of man in the head. He wrote, Christ located it in the heart. First reading. A reading from the book of Job. Job chapter 9 verse 1 to 12 and 14 to 16. Job answered his friends and said I know well that it is so. But how can a man be justified before God? should one wish to contend with him. He could not answer him once in a thousand times. God is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who has withstood him and remained unscathed? He removes the mountains before they know it. He overturns them in his anger. He shakes the earth out of its place. And the pillars beneath it tremble. He commands the sun, and it rises not. He seals up the stars. He alone stretches out the heavens, and treads upon the crests of the sea. He made the bear and Orion, the Pleiades and the constellations of the south. He does great things past finding out, marvelous things beyond reckoning. Should he come near me, I see him not. Should he pass by, I am not aware of him. Should he seize me forcibly, who can say him nay? Who can say to him, what are you doing? How much less shall I give him any answer? or choose out arguments against him. Even though I were right, I could not answer him, but should rather beg for what was due me. If I appealed to him and he answered my call, I could not believe that he would hearken to my words. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 88 verse 10 bc to 15 Let our response be, let my prayer come before you, Lord. Daily I call upon you, O Lord. To you I stretch out my hands. Will you work wonders for the dead? Will the shades arise to give you thanks? Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Do they declare your mercy in the grave? Your faithfulness among those who have perished? Are your wonders made known in the darkness? or your justice in the land of oblivion? But I, O Lord, cry out to you. 
with my morning prayer I wait upon you. Why, O oh Lord, do you reject me? Why hide from me your face? Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. Gospel Reading A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Luke chapter 9 verse 57 to 62. As Jesus and his disciples were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead. But you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord. But first let me say farewell to my family at home. Jesus answered him, No one who sets a hand to the plow, and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord The Reflection on Today's Gospel In this passage from Luke, people admire Jesus, and are inspired by him and so, I will follow you, they say but they remind him that they have their own concerns to deal with first. Jesus asks them if they really know what it means to follow him. Today's Gospel reading sees Jesus sifting some of the applicants who wish to follow him, much as an employer evaluates candidates for a job or position. Does the candidate have what it takes? Jesus here puts his finger on a number of attitudes which might be a reason for rejection. For Jesus, the task is urgent and all-embracing. The bar has been set very high. The urgency of preaching the kingdom requires an immediate response from the candidate, who has no time to bury relatives, or even to say goodbye properly. For a Jewish culture which took burial of the dead seriously, and which held the family in high respect, these are strong words from Jesus. What about my own call to be a disciple? Does my own story reflect anything of Jesus' dramatic style? Perhaps my call to follow Jesus has been costly in terms of my family and other close relationships? Jesus knows that I can have good intentions, but he reminds me that when I follow him to eat, here must be no conditions laid down. I must be prepared to share in the sorrows and joys of his ministry. Jesus, deepen my understanding of what it means to make a permanent commitment to you. Lead my enthusiasm to new places of determination, new understandings, new orientation so that I may abide in you as I look forward to eternal life. 